Hi guys, this is Justin's video blog and we're going to talk about Rick and Morty. Um, I hope you like the beat because I made it, so check it out. Okay, so I found some great reflections of the political philosophy of Rick and Morty online and I was going to critique them alongside the show. Um, my paper, my critique is called The Speculative Fiction of Existentialist Humanism. Rick Sanchez of Rick and Morty and the Limits of a White-Centric Politic of Multi-Ethnic Alliance. So I think it's relevant to talk about the politics of alliance right now. I'm thinking like the tensions kind of between like Revolutionary Communist Party and Black Lives Matter movement, canonically read cynical grim revolutionaries in a political meeting near you, but some uh, inevitable limitations to those perspectives. And I wanted to try to synthesize maybe what some of those limitations are so that we can take a look at them. So, back to Rick and Morty. Uh, you know all about it. It's a grandson-grandfather duo with a portal gun, and they're going all over the universe. Um, while waiting for the highly anticipated third season, the Wisecrack YouTube channel gave an acute analysis of Rick and Morty's, and especially Rick's, philosophical existentialism, if not the political ramifications of this philosophy. As Jared of Wisecrack points out, he calls himself Jared, Rick is something like Nietzsche's madman who prophesies the news of God's death from the normative border between gifted and insane. Now, what uh, Nietzsche is really trying to say, says Jared, is that after the Enlightenment and the Scientific Revolution, the big being in the sky that gave value to our lives is no longer relevant. After the death of God in Western philosophy, what remains is nihilism, a void of meaning. Morty's monster son realizes, my life has been a lie, God is dead, the government is lame, and Thanksgiving is about killing Indians. This struggle over the lack of meaning is what defines Rick Sanchez says jared well back to me while regarding thanksgiving it would seem that rick and morty contains a basic critical reading of imperial history it is more accurately representative of the emotional venting of a basic existentialism at the heart of the experience of growing up leftist in the metropole defamiliarization from ideology in this growing up orients budding political radicalism within the u.s secular scientific context toward a nihilistic existentialism that manifests discursively as a universal humanism predicated on the universal insignificance of mankind jared of wisecrack understands universal insignificance to be a cornerstone of the cosmic pessimism inherent in hp lovecraft's cosmic horror sci-fi trope upon which rick and morty models itself nihilism, existentialism, and humanism, and their attendant paranoid anxieties about insignificance arise in the so-called colonial encounter as much as from the scientific revolution. So from either side of the metropole colony divide, both Sartre and Fanon could be driven by the horrors, epistemological disjunctures, and new loves made possible by colonialism through a demystification that leads to existentialism as a humanism. Yet, they still produce radically different but nevertheless complementary conceptions of anti-hegemonic or decolonial love. Reading Sartre's cosmic pessimism of insignificance at the level of God versus man, existentialism as specifically humanism, against Fanon's protean black pessimism at the level of human versus non-human other, we can ask why Rick and Morty's political philosophy is more concerned with the exchange of sovereignty between God and man rather than with Fanon attending to the production of subclasses of being which de facto displace the big other of God to organize and stratify social relations as if hierarchy keys of being were natural and self-evident hi guys this is justin